Rocks are used in several different ways here on the property. All of them aesthetic. Uh, but there are several ways and several purposes that they have. Retaining, absolutely. You stack rocks together, they hold something back. Interest, there's a thousand points of focus. So every little nook and cranny can be planted with something. And there's always a different way to look at that, that plant. Uh, photography. It also provides, without it retaining, if you've noticed in the gardens, over the years Tony has put in a lot of rocks in the berms, one here, one there. They don't touch, they're just one rock at a time. And that, that's not just for looking good, but it serves a couple purposes. It gives you a place to walk. It's a safe zone for your foot. You don't have to guess. And wherever you do step, if you step on a rock, that actually spreads out the weight, so there's a lot less compaction. But it also gives a spot to put, especially smaller plants, like if you have a trillium. Put the trillium next to the rock, and now you know where your trillium is. Uh, it also gives you that, that great backdrop to take a picture with. So even one at a time, rocks serve a very important purpose, multifaceted purpose in the garden. So you got a berm, let's stack some rocks. Who stacked rocks before? You have? Isn't that fun? Yeah, I love it. Yeah? The farm. <laughs> well, one thing I tell Rocks people. Rocks on wagons in the farm. There you go. Try to get. wonder what we were doing. <laughs> When stacking rocks, and, and it's actually quite, uh, it's, it's a lot simpler than it looks. I like to stack boulders, but I always tell myself that I'm stacking rocks for the plants. It gives you an opportunity to, to, to incorporate hundreds and thousands of new types of plants into your garden. Suddenly, well, you can, you can, put, you can put more kinds of plants in a hundred square foot of, of a berm garden with rocks than you can in an acre of a flat field type planting with shrubs and, and perennials, things like that. When you go to rocks, suddenly you're able to just really zoom down into tiny little spots in your garden. There's not a piece of triple shred mulch that goes unnoticed at that point. If you do want to try this someday in your own garden, these are actually not that expensive. You can buy these beautiful mossy covered boulders, about 3,000 pounds at a time in a pallet for about $150 to $175 a ton. Where? Scott Stone in Raleigh. They also have their main yard is in Mebane, but find Scott Stone. They, they do have a web presence. You can find them. And they are Spring Lake boulders. These are Spring Lake boulders. And these are smalls. But uh, they're only $150 to $175 a ton. So that, is that delivered? Is that delivered? It's not delivered, no. Um, but their delivery is reasonable for what's actually happening. They're moving tens of thousands of pounds of rock from there to there for you. Um, it's worth it. And once you have rocks, you'll always have rocks. Uh, the great thing about rocks in your berms is as when you plant those rocks, you'll find that they are, they're drought tolerant. Um, <laughs> you know, all this water that we've had hasn't really adversely affected them either. Uh, sun or shade is good, deer tolerant. The voles don't mess with them. It's kind of hard on the tillage equipment though. Well, yeah, no, why would you ever want to till a rock? You know, that's, that's why you drag them around on wagons on the farm. But when I move rocks around, it's important to think about your back. And more importantly, keep it out of the equation. People always say, well, put your back into it. I say, take your back out of it. <laughs> so what I like to do is stack these stones and I look for a face. It's important to think about the edge that you want to keep. So when you're, whenever you're edging, or stacking for retention, think about your edge. You want a good smooth curve. And I'll get through this pretty quick. We'll go look at the, um, we'll go look at some edges in the garden. In the past, like I said, I've been here 11 years. When I first started this, I hadn't stacked a rock in my life. I made mistakes and I'll show them to you. And I'll show you where we are now, the difference that that makes. I'm just gonna take this, try to lock it in there. And again, I'm not worried about this. That's a planting pocket in my book. I like that. So I'm gonna watch this curve kind of go around. I'm choosing rocks that have a flat face or a rock that will lock in well to the one next to it. So again, I'm not just gonna try to lift this up. I'm gonna try to let the rock do the work for me. Roll it around. And no need to try to move too fast, right?
pretty good fit. And again, we got a nice flat face. These are randomly selected, so I'm gonna watch that curve. So I'm taking this down and I want to, the purpose of what I'm doing here is I want to retain this a little bit. I want, to, I want our golf carts to be able to cut this corner just a little sharper. So by doing that, that will allow that to happen. And as you build it, you're gonna to wanna to backfill. Think of your compost as the mortar. What I do then is I get in there, use my fingers, and I jam it all in there like that. I'm not trying to pack it, but I'm trying to get it everywhere. And again, this pile of boulders, that's about $20 worth of stone, that's it. Yeah, those, believe it or not, they don't really go anywhere. Anybody want to try stacking a couple? Jump in, try it. It's fun. Do you always do it without gloves? Yes. <laughs> yes, I don't like gloves. They slow me down and I don't... I like to feel what I'm doing. And that, Even when you're planting? Yeah, generally not planting either. Sometimes if I'm working with thorns, but even then, not usually. Nope, that one's not happening. But you learn the hard way pretty fast about pinched fingers with this. So it actually helps when you don't use gloves, trial and error, but you start to predict two or three ricochets ahead on a stone. It's. And you know just when to get your hands out of there or where to stop it and it's it takes practice uh, painful practice but that one's not going to happen well if, if you've got something that's more or less a rectangle you've got essentially eight sides so each rock has eight ways to to use it at least rudimentary you know initially but Yeah, just use that compost as mortar. It's amazing how fast it firms up. Is that pure compost? This is a 50-50 mix. This is, uh, we made this on the site. And so this is our uh, native soil. A little tiny bit of Raleigh red clay. I'll tell you why later. And, um, and then organic matter from from the property and Garner's leaves. Garner dumps all their leaves here, the city of Garner. It is, we're kind of like coastal plain here. So our native soil is between 4-1, well, between 3-1 and 4-5 maybe. It's extremely acidic and it has almost no potassium whatsoever. It's more or less dead soil. I mean, it still grows trees, uh, a lot of oaks, pines, of course. But you add compost to that and you bring it to life. And the reason that I like to bring in some Raleigh red clay is Raleigh red clay is extremely high in potassium, but lacks phosphorus. So you bring in just a little bit of that. You, you, you mix it 50-50, you more or less make concrete. We do, you don't want to do that. But if you bring in just a little bit of red clay and add it to your coastal plain sand, you get a permanent source of potassium. Now you've got the P and the K on that bag of fertilizer taken care of. Your nitrogen, that's why you add compost. And if you want even more nitrogen, add a little plant tone to it. Then you can have an organic soil very easily. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Actually, for a berm this tall, you wouldn't want to go really any higher with these rocks because it is important that the soil behind them is much taller than them. So really what you want is your soil will be here up to there. So there's really not room for another stone on top of this. Does there need to be a drain in a berm? It depends. If you're planting, if you're building a berm, if you're building a small wall for the plants, then no. The roots actually lock in. They hold it together pretty well, I have found. Um, if you're further north where you get bigger, harder freezes, 
then yeah, you're gonna start thinking about it. But it all happens, has to do with your backfill. If you use something like a permatill or a gravel mixed with a little organic matter, you get that same drainage and you still have the opportunity to grow incredible plants. What if you're starting off with all Raleigh red clay? Uh, get, uh, get some compost, get some permatill. Okay. Absolutely. Like what percentage would you say? For which purpose? What, what do you want to do with it? As a backfill or as... If you're building a berm out of that Raleigh red clay, you want 50% compost, 50% soil. And then with that mix, then you, then you add permatill so that the final volume is about two-thirds compost soil mix, one-third permatill. <coughs> permatill is not cheap, no. but it is worth it. It's an incredible, incredible product. What is it? I'm from Michigan. It is an expanded, and I always get it wrong, I don't remember if it's slate or, cl uh, it's either slate or, um, slate. Slate. Okay. or shale, I can't remember oh, which. Yeah. Right. One of those two. But basically they pop it like popcorn and it makes it very lightweight. It is porous. It has, it's sterile and inert in the soil, but it has an incredibly high cation exchange capacity, meaning it has the ability to share the nutrients that are there. It's a, it's a catalyst in that sense. It's not used up in the reaction, but it shares, it, it conveys. Uh, but voles don't like it, so if you have 33% permatill in your soil, the voles will be less likely to be a problem. There is not a, I wish I could say there was a silver bullet out there for you, but uh, Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I said, feel free to jump in, stack one, and see what happens. <laughs> After building the the uh, crevice gardens out of recycled concrete, boulders are not that difficult. <laughs> but there's a lot of a lot of areas there that are open, they're, they're big gaps. It's not holding that much weight back either. But in there you can easily plant. You think about, let's say this is in full sun. Well, let's go to house, let's go to house eight and look at agaves, mangaves, uh, the little cactus that we sell now. And suddenly you can just plug one in right there. It's easy. And I mean, all you gotta do is just plant it and it's done. That's the thing about cactus, you just don't ever have to water them again. If you're in the shade, now you've finally got a spot for that trillium. You've finally got a spot for those little plants that cost a ridiculous amount of money, but in a place where you know where it is. It's not going to get lost in the weeds. It's not going to get, it's protected from feet. It's protected in a way, in a sense, from sometimes from deer. It's uh, a bit more protected from voles, but not entirely in this situation. But if you control a backfill then, and when I said, when I said uh, permatil is expensive, Okay, if you did this entire berm with one-third permatill, that's two thousand dollars wholesale of permatill. If you backfilled this wall with thirty-three to fifty percent permatill, it's two three hundred dollars worth of permatill. Now you've got a small area of vole protection. You plant things up here you don't have to worry about voles with. And so that's a way to do it. Anyway, there's a small thing. So cactus or in the shade, one of your really cool little uh, money plants, so to speak, and you finally got a good, you finally got a good spot for them. And that, that's what I tell people about design too. Is you know you've got 500 square feet to design, and you've got a garden hose to water it with. Well, think about it like this. Kind of group together the things. So yes, you still you're going to want those erosemas, those expensive plants, plants that want more water. Put them all together, and where it's further away and it's tougher to water, that's where you put your dry stuff. Put the cactus, put the agaves over there. Think about it that way, and you can have the best of both worlds. You can have plants that need a ridiculous amount of water because they're all in one small spot that's easy for you to water. But anyway, berm guarding with rocks. Another thing this allows you to do is have more of a flat top on your berm. 
and therefore will actually stay a little bit more moist than if it's a real tall hump like this. This is going to get very dry in the summer. So when you berm it up like this, you flatten it off on the top a little bit and it should hold more water. Again, planting space, water, there's $20 worth of rock here. It's less than $200 a ton for boulders that you can go pick out. Many of them will be covered in moss. Very pretty. Um, and that's not going anywhere. It doesn't take special skill to do it. Most important part is to pay attention to edges, make sure they line up. So a lot of reasons to, to use rocks in the garden.